Okay, now we're getting ready to uh, the center section. I've got the handles welded on. I made a three-quarter inch mark to tell me uh, where the base of the uh, refractory cement will go. We want to have it solid on both the uh, bottom and the top. And I've got that set up. We're doing it a little bit different here. We've uh, put some plastic tape over the the bottom of the foundry edge here, so it won't the cement won't stick. And we're going to set this. The tube's cut a little longer, so it fits down in to the foundry. And then we're going to set this on top like so, and line it up. And we're going to take it on real solid. And then we'll be able to uh, uh, pack a base of about three quarters of an inch in here. I've cut my insulable blanket. Uh, I've cut it seven inches by 36 and a half inches. And we're going to fit that in here after we pack the bottom, because otherwise it'd be real difficult to get down in there around that, that lip edge. And since these, uh, I cut these with a slight chamfer uh, from the tank on both top and bottom. So I'm not going to bother to put the uh, welded steel pins in to hold anything in place. It should hold real fine since this uh, top is actually a slightly bit smaller than the base. So that's it. I'll get it set up and we'll start pouring. Okay, now we're ready to start pouring. We've got our water ready. We'll go ahead and mix it and we'll start doing the pour.
This is the burner assembly. I know everybody wants to know that. It looks complicated. Don't get scared. You've only got to drill two holes right here and put one hole here and everything else screws together. So you can't get any easier. What I've done is made scale uh, one inch equals two inch to have it oversized, hoping it will actually pick up on the camera. Uh, the top tube here basically involves a nipple with a hole in it, a reducer, which acts as a Ventura. I don't know if you're familiar with carburetors, but that's how carburetors operate. And then you've got an extension nipple. Now, when it comes to the Ventura, I don't know if you can pick this up with the camera, but it has a, a slope to it, kind of a bell shape. That's important if you can find one like that. Otherwise, you will have to buy one like this. It will still work. I don't know its efficiency. I have not studied that. But it should still work. It's going to be basically the idea of uh, the burner in here where the uh, quarter inch is. It's going to be pushing gas down and mixing it with off. Uh, this does not require a fan. That's why it doesn't require a fan. Uh, the next thing that you're going to make, which is going to fit inside this tube, like so, is going to be the uh, gas assembly. And what it is is two two inch nipples here, a quarter inch T with a brass plug in it. And what we're going to have to do is drill a number 60 drill hole right dead in the center of this plug. It's going to be the only hard thing, but I have a simple way to do it so it won't be a problem for you. And I'm using uh, these copper sleeves. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is uh, by putting these sleeves on, you don't have to weld all this together. And you might later on uh, want to change things. You can just simply take it apart, unscrew it, take it apart, swap it around. Uh, it's more versatile than simply permanently welding it in there. Uh, now, as far as how this thing's going to operate, you cannot use a grill type regulator. It's set, there's no way to adjust it, and it's very low PSI. You're going to have to go buy what they consider a high pressure gas regulator. That can be anywhere from 0 to 40 pounds, but you need a minimum of 0 to 20 for initial firing and then reducing the pressure way down to about 4 pounds. So you'll have to buy a regulator that will come with a hose, but you won't have to add a dial gauge on so you can read the output pressure. So you'll have to go to hardware and fit all this stuff up. And there also will be a connection fitting. I'm using a quarter inch inside the amateur iron pipe for the uh, burner. And you may have to do, I believe it's a flare fitting, something like that. So you will have to make, make all this stuff together, which is simple enough to do at a hardware store. So the hose goes to the burner. And otherwise, that's it. Now, I think it's obvious this number 60 drill bit uh, will not chuck on a standard home drill. Dremel uh, offers this uh, small bit ch uh, chuck, small chuck for their tool, that actually will chuck this and hold it in very well. Now, what we want to do, I've already hot glued this down so it won't move around. This also has a little bit of kind of like a funnel in it that's going to center me up right dead on the center without any effort at all. You want to get it going kind of kind of slow, not real fast, like that. And then we're just going to try to keep it as straight as we can, punch it. It's not so super critical as you might think. And it would be nice if we had a little miniature drill press, but I don't know where you're going to find one this small. But this is the solution. That's it. Okay, we're ready to go ahead and put this burn together. It's, it's actually very quick. I've already got the holes drilled. We've already done this, as you saw in the earlier video. We're going to take a little bit of high temp RTV and very sparingly put it around the threads. Just so we don't have you know too many excessive leaks. And of course, at this point, it all will go into the foundry, so it's not that important. All right, that's ready to go, and it goes on here. Just thread it in.
now it goes in like this so we stick it in there and also we'll cut ourselves a little bit of RTV around our threads here I'm trying not to use too much it's really not that important we'll get plenty of cell Then we take one of the copper spacers, which we've got here. They've already been cut, slap slip on the inside, all precisely fit. And then we need an end cap. I'll go ahead and put a little coating of RTV around the threads here. So it doesn't leak too bad or anything. This actually doesn't get as hot as you might think. Uh, this actually stays cool to the touch. The flame is actually being shot down a tube uh, about that far before it even is fired. So uh, it's amazing. And then later, when you reposition the flame to inside the foundry, it'll be all the way inside the foundry, only having the gas and air mixture. Now you want to be careful to kind of line it up. You want to get it as centered as you possibly can. Uh, just kind of nestled in there uh, the best you can. Now the beauty of this is this allows you to fine tune it. Uh, if you notice it's a little bit off down a tube when you're actually firing the gas, you can so regrind the copper a little bit. You can tweak it. So you know you're not permanently in there like you would be if you welded it and then nothing you can do you just go buy another fitting which uh, this stuff's really not all that cheap actually so you want to have a, a, a great bit of adjustability kind of you kind of look at it like this I'm, I'm looking at it right there I see about where it's set where it's this way and we're just going to tighten it up now, we're getting good and tight there Back it up a little. Get it pointed down the center. Five or two. We'll go ahead and tighten it a little more. And we'll point it down the center of the tube. Okay, that's it. Uh, we've got this in, as you see. I'll try to stick it as close to the camera as I can. Maybe it'll catch that. I don't know about the light. We've got our orifice in end cap on. We will attach the hose to this end here. The only thing left this and that's it. Okay this is the uh, timeline for the uh, foundry's first fire. This is a long drawn out process. Uh, the slower you can do it the better. After you do this uh, you will be able to fire your aluminum in an hour. So don't, have a lot, don't let these hours scare you. Uh, what the object of the game is, we're taking what is a uh, horrible refractory cement, which is, has uh, the characteristics of like concrete, it is hydrocytic, and we're going to heat it up and we're going to fire it into an actual ceramic. Once it goes past that, it'll, it'll always be a ceramic, it'll never be like concrete again. Uh, the first thing, of course, is to air dry. Uh, uh, three days is a, a safe time. You can put a little bit of heat lamp from a distance on it and get the temperature up to maybe 8,500 degrees, especially if it's cold, and just kind of let it dry for several days. I had to use about five days because we had it rain for several days in a row. Uh, but that's the thing. First is the air dry over here. You get all that. And this is the part when we start firing it. Now, when we start firing it, you'll take the burner and sit it on fire bricks and slide it about halfway out of the burner's sleeve. It turn, turn on the lowest pressure that you can get it to run. And the reason for that is the burner's not designed to put out that low of a heat. It's designed for 
you know, for the foundry. But by doing that, that will give a real gentle heat. It will start drying out some of the remaining moisture. You'll do that for about two hours at, say, 2 to 3 PSI. Then after that, what's going to happen is going to be water vapor coming out you can't see. And this is where most people mess up. They think, well, now the steam's out. It's time to go ahead and just ramp her on up. No. You want to wait a minimum of four hours. Uh, you'll put the slided burner in gradually, finally have it in a tube, and start running it about three to four PSI. Uh, and then allow that to go on for another couple of hours. Eventually, somewhere between four to six hours, uh, you'll start seeing kind of a dark red glow. It'll start in the bottom of the lining wheel. Uh, but it won't be in the top. Matter of fact, the top will still kind of have the appearance of the, of the grayish concrete. So you want to wait, uh, keep the pressure about where you have it there, and gradually move it up. They'll give you degrees per hour, but unless you have some instrument to tell you that, you'll just have to base that on your judgment. Uh, but since we're only doing an inch thick, uh, it will go pretty quickly, so just, you can take it quite slow with this. Uh, some of these schedules you'll see are based on 9 to 10 inches thick, you know, it's like a walk-in uh, refractory, you know, furnace, so, uh, but just depending on your manufacturer's recommendations on, on the instructions, what you have to do. Uh, once you get the red all the way up to the top, uh, that's when you do kind of the ramp up to your operating temperature. You'll base it on degrees per hour, and you'll slowly start turning the pressure up. Uh, Finally, you're going to start getting a, a bit of an orange. Between the even red and the orange, even red all the way to the top and then the orange is when you want to start cranking it up slightly. Uh, that'll go all the way up to your operating temperature. Uh, I'm using a 2,550 degree Fahrenheit or 2,600. So that turns out to be kind of a bright orange all the way through. Uh, it, when you get to the operating temperature, uh, to keep your pressure regulated, don't let it get too much higher than that, and go for one solid hour at least, uh, you know, just soak it at that temperature uh, for about an hour. Then after you're done, shut the gas off, you cool down, it'll be about the same amount as when you did the ramp up. Uh, so just allow it to cool down naturally, don't go pulling it apart or moving it or anything until it gets to where you can touch it with your hand and pick it up. It's, it's fully cooled down. And uh, don't let this scare you or the day you get scared. Uh, we're using a very, very thin thickness here that's not going to be trapping water, uh, causing uh, steam or blowout. The first part is mainly because steam can build up, and if it builds up, it, it can, can crack the lining or blow out chunks of the lining. So just keep it gentle, and it's very forgiving, and everything should be all right. If you do notice after it cools down, there's a few minor hairline cracks, nothing major. Don't worry about it. That is normal because we're encasing it in a, a propane tank tube. There will be certain stresses, stay wires, the top would be probably most likely green. That might cause small cracks. They generally don't go all the way through and they are not a problem. Uh, I've been running this uh, my older foundry for over 10 years. And when I first fired it, I was a little bit of a hurry, saw a few hair lines. And there's still hair lines after 10 years, and there's no need to replace the line. So that was an unnecessary concern at that time. I just didn't know any better. So that's it, and it's pretty simple. We'll go ahead and fire it up.